Still, though, uh, by 2006, we, we did not have consensus on, on all the articles. We, uh, although we, we got consensus on self-determination and stuff like that, uh, we had no consensus on lands, territories, natural resources, uh, membership, uh, and, a, and a few a few other articles. There were there was no um, no consensus on. It, uh, so what the chairman of the of the working group did, uh, a guy from Peru, a name is uh, Luis Chavez, decided enough was enough. We we've been working talking about this uh, decade for now for 12 years, from, from 1990. 1995 to 2012, that was 12 working years, and we said, that, that's it now. Um, uh, I have decided that all these texts that we agreed to in, by consensus with, between these people and states, we will, will accept, and all those that we don't have consensus to, this is my decision. And he, and he decided what the text would be under, on the remaining 10 or 15 articles. And so it became a chairman, it was called a chairman's text. And it was a courageous thing for him to do. I mean, some of us wanted to choke him, uh, but uh, in, in the end, uh, you know, it was the text was probably better that way than than if we continued uh, negotiating for another year or two. Uh, besides, the states were were agitating that they were going to cut off the funding to the working group anyway. To make a long story short, <clears throat> the chairman got fed up with the, with the, the negotiations. He said, "This is my text, and now I'm going to give that to the Human Rights Council." The Human Rights Council was uh, replaced. The Commission on Human Rights, because it became discredited. I don't want to go into all that. It's a whole different story. So the um, the first president of the of the uh, of the Human Rights Council, the first meeting of the Human Rights Council was in it was in June 2006, and, and it was a man named Ambassador Alba from uh, Mexico. He wanted to pass that declaration under his watch. He wanted. He, he says that if the declaration doesn't get through on my watch, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So he insisted that. That we pass it. So in that, in 2006, the um, the chairman presented the uh, the draft declaration uh, to the Human Rights Council for a vote, and um, there were only like I think there's 28 governments in the I can't remember how many governments maybe 43 governments in the in the Human Rights Council. So when he went to the vote, uh, I, 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 I was present, and uh, and uh, we were. This is right after Harper government got elected. In, uh, just six months before, and Canada had uh, indicated that they were going to vote against the declaration. Uh, of course, we were furious about that, and uh, we decided that uh, uh, but not much we could do. Um, when the vote was called, uh, usually they, uh, uh, it's usually by consensus or not by consensus. Uh, so uh, there was no consensus, so the chairman said, uh, we have a, a request by a state to have a roll call vote. Uh, and, Without mentioning the name of the state, Guatemala raised their hand and they asked, uh, "Who uh, was the government that asked for a vote?" And the chairman said, "Canada." So then they had to have a roll call vote, and a roll call vote means there's a little button on your thing. You vote yes or no. You know, uh, uh, green for yes, red, red for no, and I think uh, yellow for abstain. Anyway, the the buttons didn't work. They were pushing the buttons, it didn't work. So then, so the chairman said, "Well." I guess we'll have to have a, a physical roll call vote. So they get a bag with all the government's names in it, and, and they, they pull the government's name out, and they pull out Cuba. So Cuba votes first, and then they go alphabetically around. You know. So Canada voted last. You know. So they went, and, and, they, and they, so they, so they asked Cuba, Cuba, and Cuba would say C, or yes, and then all the, they go down all, all along the, 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 the states, and up, up, up and around, um, until they hit Russia. And then Russia said no. A couple other state, states uh, complained that then, then it came down to Canada. And then uh, and they called Canada. And you, big long pod. And the room was packed. You have to see, I, I, I just had this. The room was packed, full of people. People were lined up along the wall. You couldn't, there's no place to sit. The walls were full. I was in the peanut gallery on top because I wanted to watch everything. And, and that was packed full of people. And the, the press gallery was full. And then um, and when they called Canada, Canada said no. Uh, they says, oh, pardon me, <laughs> says, no, and then there's a, a big audible groan in the room, you know, that, uh, that Canada would, would vote against, against the declaration. And, but it passed anyway, uh, and the, the, the two voting, uh, the two negative votes were Canada and, uh, and, and Russia. Uh, now that it's passed by the Human Rights Council, it's supposed to go to New York and to the General Assembly and just be rubber stamped at the main declaration. Well, that's not what happened. 
Somebody, you know, and we accuse Canada of this and the United States of, 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 of in New York of getting people agitated. And, uh, and the, when the when the uh, when the declaration came to the third committee, the third committee, the third committee vets all the resolutions before it goes to the General Assembly. So all the fights will take place in the third committee and not on the floor of the General Assembly. So in the third committee, the African governments became afraid of the declaration, the right to self determination, a whole bunch of other stuff. So they said they, they, they wanted to have more study on the, on, the, on the declaration. And this pissed a lot of people off, including states, because these are the same governments who voted in favor of it in Geneva. You know. So you know, something happened between uh, June of, 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 of uh, uh, 2006 and, and uh, September, October, and November of 2006, because of the, the, uh, the Afghan governments did not want the declaration to be passed. So that, uh, that screwed us up again, and so then uh, that took another year of negotiations behind closed doors because in New York, we were not part of the consensus anymore. It was a separate, it was states, it was the representatives of, of, the, of the African governments, it was Botswana, who's no fan of, of indigenous people, if you know how they treat the, the Bushmen in the, in the Kalahari. You had, um, I, think, I believe it was Egypt and uh, Niger, or Nigeria, I can't remember. Um, and then on, on the other side, you had Peru, who was, who was the chairman, Mexico and Guatemala were the other, were the two. You'll notice that the, the negotiators, uh, the, Canada was not in that, in that group, you know, and because uh, the states were, were up to, had it up to here with Canada. Canada uh, sponsored the working group on the draft declaration from 1995 to 2006. Canada was the motivator, was the, was the pr primary country to get the, that declaration through the Human Rights Council, all right, and they and they helped uh, shape the, the declaration. They they helped convince states that that self determination is not such a bad thing. It's not a danger. It's not going to break up countries. Canada uh, was supporting collective rights and, and stuff like that, and was was doing all these things. And so they, they helped convince other states to support the declaration. So when Canada voted against the, the declaration in 2006, they were pissed. I mean, they the states and. Uh, state governments in, in the United Nations were pissed at Canada for voting against the declaration in 2006 because they they convinced them to change their vote. So they they called Canada names like disingenuous, which is a polite name for being they, they lied to us you know, or, or they misled us. You know. They were and, and I'm telling you, uh, they, they they won't say it publicly, but you know they're two they're two different ones. But they tell, they told the indigenous people privately how pissed they were at, at Canada for they felt betrayed. By, by Canada when they voted against the, uh, the and actually Canada's been pretty consistent since then, actually. Um, so uh, when when there was more negotiations taking place in New York, Canada had lost its leverage. Canada had no leverage now with the with the governments because they were they were pissed at them for what they did with them in Geneva. So so they weren't in the picture at all. They tried to get the, their 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 concerns, and particularly Canada was really concerned about all the articles that deal with lands, territories, and natural resources in, in particular, but uh, and so was Australia and New Zealand. So, but they wouldn't, um, they weren't, they weren't part of the, the discussion. It was only between the African states and the Latin American states. And, and, and they came to some, the Africans wanted 42 changes or 44 changes to the text. That is a lot. So we narrowed it down to about nine, I believe. Is that what I say here? Um, yeah, nine changes. One of them actually was an improvement. A couple of them were neutral, some of them were, were damaging. Uh, now, you might say that, uh, well, so what if, if the African governments are against the declaration? They're still, if all the other uh, governments are in favor, you, you can win. You can win, you can, you can win the vote. And you win. It's not the way it works. You know? This is not about human rights. It's about politics in New York. If, if, the, if the African states let it be known that they're against the declaration and will vote against it, they will carry with them the Asian uh, states and some of the other states uh, because they will, in solidarity with Africa, that had nothing to do with indigenous people or rights or right and wrong or justice. It's about politics. So once we can, if you if you con if we convince Africa that, that that they can live with the, the text and, and the declaration, then everybody else will follow. All right. So that's what happened. So when. Um, the vote in uh, 2007 in the General Assembly, and I was there again, and this time the buttons worked. That's what it looked like. You see all the green? You can see an awful lot of green up there. 
Um, you can't see all the names, the greens, you can barely, you can see some yellow and you can see some red. There were only four red votes, and of course that was Canada, United States, Australia, New Zealand. All of Great Britain's grandchildren. Yeah. And, and the UK voted in favor. But the UK voted in favor because the EU, the European Union, were supporting the declaration, so they had to go along with, with the EU. Before this vote, I, I was, I was uh, uh, what, what do you call it, handicapping this, and I expected, I, I expected about 12, 13 countries to vote no. I expected uh, uh, Russia to vote no, because they voted no in, in, in 2000, the year before. I expected, um, uh, what's that, uh, the country in South America, Colombia which is in the pocket of, of the United States. I expected them to, to, to vote no and stuff like that. But they were smart, they abstained. Russia was smart. Ru Russia did not want to be identified with Canada, United States, and Australia, New Zealand, so they abstained. You know? and they're, they're very hostile to, to our rights. You know? So, um, but that's what, what happened anyway. There was, there was only the four countries that voted against the, the, de the declaration. So I, I, was, I was happy it was only four. Disappointed who it was, but I was happy. And these are four democratic countries, you know. Uh, anyway, the, the, I don't want to go on and on about that. Well, but anyway, that's what it looked like on, on, on the vote when the wall was green. There were only four reds. I think there were 11, uh, 11 abstentions. And there were a bunch of people also absent. Some of the abstentions and absences were a lot of the island states in, in, in Pacific, and um, uh, like Tonga and all these. And, and, they, and they abstained. And speculation was they, they didn't want to upset Australia and New Zealand because they get a lot of funding from them, a lot of foreign aid from them. So they didn't want to. Tonga has changed its position, they're now in favor. Colombia changed its position, and they're, they're now in favor. And uh, there's a couple of other countries that'll, that'll change their position. Since then, of course, um, uh, the first was um, Australia to change their position. They had a change in government in, in Australia, and uh, the Prime Minister announced that, that uh, they were changing. It was a big celebration in Australia when Australia changed its position on the declaration. Next came uh, New Zealand uh, a couple of years ago it, at, at the permanent forum in New York where the, uh, the Minister of Maori Affairs came to the permanent forum in New York uh, in the General Assembly Hall where we had our meeting and he announced that uh, uh, New Zealand was, was going to uh, endorse the declaration. Big applause. Um, at that meeting, um, the United States, uh, what's her name, uh, Susan Rice, the UN ambassador to the to the uh, United Nations, who has never uh, UN ambassador has never attended uh, the permanent forum before, and so it was a big deal for her to show up, and she would, and she made an announcement that the United States is going to reconsider its position on the uh, on, on the uh, on, on the declaration. And that, that got a lot of applause. Canada put out a press release about a month before, a month or two before, and, and just said, uh, or a few months before, and said that they're going to change this position. Uh, they put out the press release on a Friday afternoon, <laughs> after everybody's, uh, after all the media's gone home, and, and they put out a press release saying that they, they're going to endorse the declaration. So when, uh, so when Canada made its announcement at that same meeting uh, with, with uh, Susan Rice and, and, the, and the Maori, and they said that they, are, they, are, they intend to endorse the declaration, nothing. Nobody applauded, you know, uh, because they just said that they are, yeah, we already knew that's old news now. We already, you, you've put out a press release, but they expect they, they even paused waiting for applause, you know. But it didn't happen, you know. It just people just you know just so pissed at Canada that that's uh, uh, that, that's the way it was. I mean, Canada made its own bed like that. Anyway, I'm just telling you a little story. Okay, uh, this is just a graph. This is a graph that I made up uh, to show you the, the, the path of the of the UN Declaration. Uh, it started at the working group on indigenous populations. The lowest thing you can be in, in the United Nations is a working group, you know, and that's the lowest. Uh, and, we, and, we, and, and that's where the, uh, they completed the draft of the Declaration 93. They went up to the Subcommission on the Promotion and Protection of Human Rights, and they adopted the draft in, in 1994. That dotted line means anything below that is uh, human rights experts, and above that is uh, politicians. And, and, uh, um, the Commission on Human Rights, but they created a new working group on the draft declaration in 1995, that the arrow goes down to that. The open-ended intersectional working group on the draft declaration of rights of people from, it went on from 1995 to 2006. Uh, and then what it was supposed to happen, they were supposed to send it up to ECOSOC and then the General Assembly. However, in 2006, the Commission on Human Rights was, was, was eliminated. And then they created the Human Rights Council, which was put in its place. So the, the working group on a draft declaration sent a declaration to the Human Rights Council, 
And then they adopted the Declaration in June of 2006, where Canada and the United States voted against it. And then they went to the General Assembly, and they adopted the Declaration in, in 2007. All right, so that's the path of the Declaration through, through the UN system. The, square, the other square boxes uh, are, are new bodies that were created, uh, which was first. Uh, the Permit Forum on Indigenous Issues uh, was uh, created in 2000, uh, actually its first meeting was in 2002. Uh, and, and that was, it's, uh, it's made up of 16 people. Half are appointed by states and half are, are, um, are, are elected by states and half are appointed by the president of ECOSOC, Economic and Social Council, uh, nominated by Indigenous peoples. So you have, uh, so you have at least half of them, uh, of, the, of the 16 are going to be Indigenous. And some states appoint indigenous people as, as their representatives too. So you get a majority of people on that on that body are, are indigenous, and they meet in uh, they meet in um, May this year. Uh, I think May sixth. I think the meeting starts for two weeks. Uh, then the special rapporteur on the rights of indigenous people. Uh, right now, his name is James Anaya. He's an Apache from uh, Arizona, I think, and uh, excellent uh, special rapporteur. And he. As an individual special rapporteur, he deals with human rights violations against indigenous peoples. And in his country visits and stuff, and if it's, I'm not mistaken, he's visiting the United States right about now, uh, or in the next couple of weeks, he's, he's hit. Although he lives in the United States, he's making his first official visit uh, to the United States. Uh, in, uh, in, 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 and next year, he'll be coming to Canada. Um, and then the other point, expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples, that's what replaced the working group on indigenous populations. And, and that started in, in 2008, and, and they do uh, research and studies on the rights of indigenous peoples, and that's their mandate. And they get their, their direction from the Human Rights Council, and they report to the Human Rights Council. So these are the bodies that are specifically that deal with, uh, deal with uh, indigenous peoples in the UN. This is a, meet, a picture of the uh, Indigenous Caucus. This is in New York. We meet in the church center, and this is just a picture. The guy in there with the, the big back, uh, he's uh, an indigenous person from Brazil. Who happen to be there and uh, very colorful, and you'll see different people from uh, uh, different. Uh, there's an art manual you'll see facing you is from this area, and uh, and some members of our current form are, are in the front. This picture was taken about two years ago, I think. You know, so that's the uh, that's the 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 Indigenous Caucus is a very important part of, of our of our of, uh, of our how we we work. The Indigenous Caucus we. We meet before any, any, before any important meeting that deals with us, we, we have a, a two-day caucus and, 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 and to deal with it. I, I chair them. I, I coordinate the, um, uh, excuse me, I coordinate the, the caucuses in New York and in Geneva. So I organize the, the meeting room and interpreters and all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't chair them. Sometimes I'm, I'm elected to chair it, but generally I'm not. I just organize them. To, but they're, they're critical. And I'll, I'll tell you uh, another little tidbit. Um, people were very, very impressed with the power and, and the effort of indigenous people to get the declaration, to get it through the United States. All that, that ladder that I showed you, that was the power of, of, the, of the, and the solidarity of indigenous people to do that. And other, uh, other, body, other um, movements in the United Nations are not organized as well as we are, believe it or not. Um, and they were impressed with, 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 the, with how, how indigenous people got that declaration through. So now other movements are copying the indigenous people and having caucuses and, and getting like that. And because they learned from what we're doing and they're co and copying us and, and, and are working their way, to, their, their way through. So I'll just like a little tidbit there. That's a part, I call it the international indigenous movement. So I, I have a pet name for the whole thing. Yeah, this is, a, this is the um, General Assembly where uh, the opening ceremonies of the, of the permanent forum take place. Uh, standing up there is Descahe, not Descahe, uh, Taradaho, excuse me. Taradaho, uh, which is uh, you know, our uh, very important chief in the Haudenosaunee, and he does the opening uh, uh, every, every, um, every year, and uh, he's, a, he's an Anandaga. And uh, these are the opening ceremonies. Uh, that's the Maori delegation. After the Maoris, uh, uh, announced that they were going to endorse the declaration. They, they had a, uh, they, they did a, um, one of their chants uh, in, in the front of the room in the General Assembly. And then uh, the, the Hawaiians stood up and responded, which was very, very interesting to see that the two, because it's the same language, all the, the, the Polynesian, you know, the Maoris and the people in Easter Island, the people in Hawaii, it's all the same language. Uh, that's just uh, some dumb, couple of Mohawks there that's just happening hanging around, that's taking some time and uh, 
uh, and uh, working group on a draft declaration at some time. I, I don't remember what year. You'll see my newspaper stacked up there, so it had to be what I owned my paper. All right, this is the boring part. Now we deal with text. Um, Canada is always saying things like this declaration is aspirational, that it has no value, that, it, that it, it's, not, it's not binding. Well, I'm here to argue against that. Uh, yes, it's true that declarations are not binding, with the exception of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is considered uh, you know, international common law and, and, and binding. Uh, but normally declarations are, 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 are just aspirational documents. In, in that case, it's true. However, the reason why we have a declaration on the rights of indigenous people is because existing international norms, international, inter, existing international law was not applied to indigenous people. That we were left, ignored, we were left out. So uh, when we put the declaration together, all we were doing was just telling, we're just telling states that look, you have existing obligations and this is how to apply it to, to indigenous people. First of all, the preamble here in the declaration. Purpose of the Charter of the United Nations and good faith fulfillment of the obligation to assume by states in accordance with the Charter. The Charter of the United States says, We, the people of the United Nations, determined to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, and dignity and worth of human person, equal rights of men and women and nations of large and small. The, the, the text is slightly different, but the meaning is the same. Can, uh, Canada uh, is obligated to recognize. The, uh, the, the declaration because it's, it's just the rights are the same as in the charter, and the charter is binding. Uh, the covenant, these are the preamble again. Uh, the covenant, considering the covenant on civil and political rights is binding, Canada signed onto the covenant. So this is a binding right. Uh, according to the principles proclaimed in the charter, in recognition of the inherent dignity and equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is a foundation for freedom. The, our de the declaration says, uh, are equal to all other peoples, while recognizing the right of all peoples to be different, to consider themselves to be different, to be respected as such. Further, that all doctrines and policy practices based on advocating superiority of peoples or individuals on the basis of national origin, blah, 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 are uh, legally, in, are, are um, racist, scientifically false, legally in the, uh, invalid, uh, morally condemnable, and socially unjust. These are the same rights. All right, that are on, what, on the covenant which is binding and the declaration. Covenant on political rights, Article 1, all peoples have a right to self-determination. Article 3, indigenous peoples have the right to self-determination. And by virtue of that, all right, they freely determine their political status, they freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. It's the same wording. This is binding on Canada. Canada signed the, the, the covenant. This is the binding and the declaration. There's no difference. You know, so that's what's binding. It points, the declaration points to binding uh, a, a law that Canada is supposed to follow. The preamble also says that permanent interest people are equal to all other peoples. To me, this is the fundamental, this is fundamental to the, to, to the entire declaration. Indigenous peoples are equal to all other peoples. That is, without that, anything less than that is racism. If Canada, the United States, or anybody else wants to say that indigenous people are not equal to other peoples, not equal to them, it's racist and discriminatory, and it's fundamental. And that, uh, and that, what was what is a to me the principal argument, and the principle of why, you know, the other things like doctrine of discovery and all those other things are, are, are applied to us, because the violation of this. The Article One is also the same in the, in the covenant on economic, social, and cultural rights. It's the same article. Article One is the same. That's binding to Canada. So Canada can't deny us our right to self-determination because it's, it's binding in other instruments. Article 2 uh, of the Declaration are free and equal in all, all, in all other peoples. The uh, uh, CCPR is the same thing. Present. All individuals within this territory are subject to Jewish rights without, dis without distinction of any, of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, etc., etc. It's the same kind of right. That, that's being described in, in, in each. Co the covenant's binding to Canada, and Canada's saying this is aspirational. It's, it's ludicrous to say that this is aspirational and, and not binding, because it is binding in, in, in other instruments. I, I have a whole list of these things. Um, Article 3, to ensure all persons whose rights and freedoms are being recognized in violation of effective remedy 
and not with any violations being committed, etc. Article 4 of the Declaration, this is people who have a right to access to prompt decisions to adjust and fair procedures for resolutions of conflicts and disputes. Um, obviously, that doesn't happen. When you look at all the disputes and things that were not, uh, that, that are not happening, that, that we can't get justice in, in a domestic uh, situation. And, uh, and we're trying to get uh, 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 justice, and it's very, very difficult. It can't, you can't say that this is, has to be an aspiration. This has to be an effective uh, 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 right that has to be uh, that, that has to be applied and given to, or at least uh, applied. Yeah, applied to uh, uh, indigenous people, just as it is in the covenant. You know, the same. That's a binding uh, law, and, and this points to, uh, to that law. Uh, the covenant. Uh, nobody should uh, perform an act aimed at the destruction of any rights and freedoms recognized uh, therein. Article, the Declaration people have a right to maintain and strengthen the distinct political uh, while retaining the right to participate fully if they so choose in a political, economic, social, and cultural life of the state. These two are, are, are similar. They're talking about the same rights. You know, one, is, one is binding, and Canada says the other is aspirational. I'm saying that the rights that are, that are in, in Article 5 in the Declaration are binding. And, and just because it says a Declaration doesn't mean it's not. I'm just trying to link these two together. Running out of time here. Go ahead, next. I'm just going to go over these. International borders. We're talking about Mohawks and talking about others that are on both sides of the border. You know, this is a, this is a big issue. You know, do we have a right to, 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 to cross, to, to have relations across the border and stuff like that? And, um, and you look at Article 5, Article 12 of the Covenant, within a territory shell, within that territory, have the right to liberty, movement, and freedom to choose its resident residence. Also has to do with uh, identity, you know. To leave, to leave a country, including its own, that's, that's a good passport um, issue. Yeah. To defend your passport. Next. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys can do the rest. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's the whole, um, you know, I can go on and on and on and on. I think I'll, I'll end it there. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, because it gives you half an hour to ask questions. All right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>